When most people think of animation, what comes to mind is either Disney or anime. Basically, the United States and Japan. It is said that full-length animated films have been created with teams of 500 to 600 people, making it one of the most work-intensive forms of entertainment. Based on this, it would make sense for the talent in animation to congregate in a few locations. At least, that's the assumption. In spite of the hurdles, there have in fact been cartoons and even full-length animated movies created around the world. More than most of you are probably aware of. From Lottie Ranger of Germany, animating by capturing silhouettes frame by frame as early as 1926, to some Russian animations, and word on the street is that the French animation industry has been doing pretty well recently. But today we're going back to one of the most seemingly unlikely of places, during the 1980s in Argentina. A supposedly children's animated film that has been all but forgotten, among others. The movie of focus today is Eco the- no, not that Eco, this Eco. Eco el Cabalito Valiente. Otherwise known on the English side of the internet as Eco the Brave Little Pony, or Eco the Brave Little Horse, or Colt. Nobody seems to agree on how to translate it because there is no official translation for it as of today. But don't worry my fellow Spanish class failouts. An English fan sub has been made available on YouTube since about a year ago. The original Spanish version seems to have been out of official circulation for years, though it has occasionally been used in charity, such as a free admissions children's viewing in Necochilla, Argentina, July 2014, alongside other films. The movie itself is about a little horse named Ico, who grew up in an idyllic and peaceful prairie. But then he decides that he wants to leave the prairie to become the king's horse, not knowing what waits him behind the castle walls. The movie's darker side is only foreshadowed by the shadowy aesthetics of the opening credits. Ico eventually ends up solving the mystery behind mysterious disappearances of other horses. The animation is not quite on the Disney level, but still pretty darn good. The most awkward sequences are all near the beginning from my point of view. The rest is pretty awesome. Overall, I would highly recommend this movie as an Argentinian, perhaps even Latin American classic. But of course, it's still not about its flaws. And perhaps the biggest flaw in this movie involves the last five minutes feeling a little bit rushed and doesn't exactly line up with all the logical chords. The pacing of the beginning could also be a point of criticism, depending upon how necessary one believes it was in order for the planned ending to have the same impact. The target audience being children would also have to be considered, despite how incredibly dark some of the themes get towards the end. For deep analyzation, there is a lot to dig in for most of the film. I'm not even going to cover all of it, but to start with one of the more quirky and obvious critiques, we have Preciosa, whose introduction is an obvious knockoff of Disney's Snow White introduction, except it's kind of better. This would not be the first time that a character's song is used as an icebreaker between Ico and a new character, since the very same thing happened when he first met Largucho. ¿Te gustó mi canción? Sí, señor! ¡Te gustó muchísimo! And since Largucho has become a trusted friend, this makes it obvious that Preciosa in turn will also become an ally. In the case of Preciosa's song scene itself, while Ico does make a complete fool of himself, he still isn't nearly as rude or aggressive as the prince from Sleeping Beauty, though it still might have helped take some notes from Snow White's prince about personal space. Another very refreshing change is that their conversation goes somewhere other than the usual I love you and I love you back route. Instead, it's treated like a real relationship that needs developed. The development of the relationship is a little rushed at particular stages, but at least there is effort put in. The point is that Ico and Preciosa speak to each other more than once before they team up for the final act of the movie. By today's standards, Preciosa's role as a character would be sort of lackluster all things considered, but for a time period in the 1980s she actually would have been one of the more progressive animated princesses out there. And by the way, if you've already noticed that the time frame for this film's creation was placed precariously right towards the end of the military's rule of Argentina, then well done! Congratulations on passing your Latin American history test! As for the rest of you, allow me to fill you in as we go. The movie's director and founder of its production company was Manuel Garcia 
Ferry. Ferry. I don't think I'm pronouncing that right, but he can be pretty much regarded as Argentina's Disney slash Miyazaki of sorts, if you like that sort of comparison. He was born in Spain, 1929, and then moved to Argentina at the age of 17 in 1946. Supposedly to study architecture, but he also worked as a freelance for advertising agencies, creating several advertising jingles. During this time, politics are just messed up. Many of the elections are considered to be fraudulent, etc., etc., and it would only get worse as Garcia's life and career as a cartoonist progressed. Judging by the timing of his move to Argentina, he does not seem to have been deterred by little, you know, political BS plastered over his Facebook wall. I'm kidding, Facebook didn't exist back then, but you get the idea. However, it's unlikely that a 17-year-old could have predicted the full extent of how far down the deep end Argentina's politics would go. In any case, he eventually got one of his original characters accepted at a major cartoon magazine known as Bilkin in 1952 for something other than an advertisement. Like many early animators around the world, he got his start on the panels of print cartooning which are often what animated features are based on. In 1959, he created Garcia Fieri Protections. Named after himself, of course, real original, just like someone else, am I right? Anyways, I digress. They started out as a never cartoon advertising company, but in 1964 they branched out to publish magazines aimed at children and parents, and of course, eventually TV shows based on these paper caricatures. The first cartoon TV series of Argentina was based on one of his popular characters, and then several others followed, including full-length films such as The Feature of Today. Lord Yucho, the ever-so-scatterbrained servant in today's movie of Focus, actually appears in most of the major films. Amazingly, several works from Garcia Productions and at least one of the full-length films, Chapito, were created and released during the military's authoritarian rule of Argentina. A time period roughly placed between 1966 and 1983, it's complicated, and it's famous for literal political warfare and various forms of censorship of the press and media. Even when the old president returned from exile to serve as president again briefly, the political violence continued, ironically in many cases spearheaded by his own supporters, among other competing extremist groups until the tables flipped in favor of a government managed by the military yet again. At first, this was seen as a good thing, probably justifiably considering the circumstances, until the military's own abuse of its power via political violence and censorship of the press began to become more and more obvious as time went on. This particular phase of the military rule began in 1974, a year before Trapito was released to the Argentinian public. Unfortunately, the timeline of Eco the Brave Little Pony's production in particular is incredibly foggy and inconsistent across the internet. It is assumed that it took three to five years to complete, which means it might have begun production either during the final years of the military rule or directly after when the transition to democracy began after the embarrassing failure of the Falklands War in Brit with Britain in 1980, officially solidified with the completion of the election in 1983. Most sources assert that the film was actually completed in 1983, or in a few cases, including a Spanish blog written by a fan in 1981, either way to be shown in international children's film festivals in Portugal or Moscow. However, for reasons that cannot be reliably confirmed by any of my sources, the film could not be distributed in its home country until 1987. However unclear the timeline of events for the film's production may be, the one sure thing is the commentary on past events contained within the movie. The harm and arrogance of corrupt powerful people is an almost constant theme in the second half of the movie. And two out of the several songs are pretty much as blatantly critical of authoritarian rule as you can possibly get. One involves telling Lord Yuchu to keep his mouth shut or he might not last long, which he does not listen to by the way. And the main mystery of the movie, which Eco needs to solve, involves mysterious disappearances as well. Don't know if you can get much more obvious than that. However, one of the most fascinating things is that while it was clearly critical of what the military dictatorship was doing, it also did not link power directly with injustice. All the bad rulers were emphasized as being bad rulers. 
while the king of the present day in the movie himself was actually a very caring person, just being tricked by someone else in the chain of command. The caring king can be seen as the glimmer of hope for order which must have been desperately needed at the time for its local viewers. Another notable little detail I can point out real quick is Ico's mother bearing a symbolic resemblance to the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo, one of the most well-known protest groups demanding answers for the disappearances of family members. The resemblance is said to be seen in the handkerchief on her head. The relationship between Iku and authority before he comes to the castle, and then of course the ending of the movie, are all great aspects for you all to analyze yourself. Garcia Productions would continue to make TV cartoons until they would make three more animated films. In 1999, 2000, and 2012 respectively. Unfortunately, Garcia passed away just a few years ago at the age of 83 in 2013, towards the end of March. But one of his major magazine illustrators and an artist who worked on Ico El Cablito Valiente and is frequently referred to as Garcia's right-hand man apparently continues to give classes and workshops in art for kids in Argentina. Jorge de los Rios. If you happen to be able to read Spanish, someone is currently writing a full biography about him thanks to his successful Idea Me campaign a while back. So you can go check the link in the description to go to keep track of that if you like. But I will also share some very useful advice from the artist himself from a published interview on the Digoto magazine. Don't ever lose the love for what you do. If not, you'll be unhappy. You need to love what you do and have the will of working, but never turn it into a sacrifice. If I could go back in time, I would do the same thing. Nunca perdir el carnio por lo que se hace, sino uno se ve condenado a ser feliz. Se debe sumar el amor por lo que haces y la voluntad de trabajar. Pero nunca debe convertirse en un sacrificio. Yo si pudiera volver atrás, haría exactamente lo mismo. And that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe and follow my Facebook and Twitter for more nerdy pop culture stuff about anime, animation, that kind of thing. Maybe video game stuff too. And I apologize if I mispronounced anything. I probably did. Enjoy one of my favorite bloopers here. Sha! I'm gonna go out there and punch that garbage truck. Make it shut up.